Design Spark, it's Redstone here. Good to see you again. My friends at RS have sent me a little package. It contains a development board for me to review for you. So let's get the box open and see what we've got inside. Right, so what we've been sent is an eval kit for a Maxim integrated microcontroller. The Max32655. Now that's an ARM M4F core. Uh, the one with the floating point unit and uh, hopefully as you can see Maxim have listed some of the kit's headline features as well as a kit list so let's get the box open and make sure it's all there so what's this that looks like the board itself that's the eval board but uh, we'll get that out in a minute. We'll leave it in its protective cover for now. So, what else is in the box? Let's have a little look. See, right. So, okay, this is the Max three two six two five Pico. Right now, I believe that that is a tiny dev kit in itself. The uh, three two six two five, which is another. Um, M4F based device and look at that how cute is that fantastic little tin that it comes in and a uh, little information card in there There's, there it is fantastic and we'll just pop that back in it's tin for safety for now I'll pop that there right what else have we got Okay, so I've got a few extra jumpers here. That's always handy because I don't know about you, but I'm always losing those. And let's see what's this. This is the Olimex Arm USB OCDH. Now, this one is the debugger that supports open on chip debugger or open on OCD. So, yeah, there we go. That's the kit there fantastic and we'll put that back in its box for safety and we've got another Olimex box here the arm jtag 2010 now this one uh, supports the boards with the 10 pin 0 0.05 inch step connectors so um yeah okay that allows devices with those tiny connectors to be debugged all right, fantastic. Just that, uh, try not to ruin it before we've even done anything with it, shall we? That would be a useful. All right, we'll pop that back on there. Right, let's have a look what's the next in the box. So we got a couple of USB cables. Yep, that's what we expect to see and oh there we go finally it's our 2.4 gigahertz bluetooth antenna brilliant great so let's open the board and identify a few of the key features so here's our 32655 eval board out of the bag not bad looking is it well we may as well start with the obvious feature the elephant on the board if you like this is a 320 by 240 color tft touchscreen and that's connected to the fp the sorry spi interface and below that we have two three and a half inch jacks a line in and a line out and these connect to the stereo audio codec there's also a digital mic with the codec device on the bottom of the board here we have a couple of user LEDs and what looked to be a couple of user switches as well along with a wake switch and a reset switch. Now above these we have a look, quite a few uh, GPIO headers and lots and lots of uh, setting headers here all over uh, but right here we have the heart of the board that's our MAX32655 device 
right next to the Bluetooth antenna. And moving up to the top of the board, we have our SWD connector and our JTAG connector. And of course our power is brought in by this USB connector here. And we also have a uh, set of LEDs here, which are power indicators for 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So that is a brief tour of the board. Now I believe there should be a demo installed on there, so let's power this up and see what we can find. So here we are, I've plugged in some power and one thing I did forget to mention in our little tour of the board was this rather lifty little toggle switch on the top here which controls the power. So when we toggle that and turn our power on, we can see that our power LEDs light up in the way that we expect and although I didn't find any documentation on the pre-programmed demo looking at this I'm gonna guess that we found empirically that the uh, demo is the infamous blinky so there we go right let's have a little chat now about the max 32655 device itself You'll be glad to know, I'm sure, that I'm not going to read off the device specs. I've put those below, along with links to the datasheet for the device and for the eval board. Having said that, I will point out a few of the salient features on the 32655 device. As it's aimed at ultra-low power applications, perhaps the first place to stop is the integrated single inductor multiple output buck regulator. This active power management across a range of input voltages gives us an extremely impressive 23.8 microamps per megahertz active current at 3 volts, which I must say compares very favourably to Maxim's competition. Now, despite this low power consumption, we still have all the usual suspects in terms of peripherals. We have SPI, I2C, I2S interfaces, Sigma Delta ADC, comparators, timers, four pulse width modulation engines, and up to 52 GPIOs. So we have everything we would expect as embedded developers. We also have a nice amount of on-chip memory. 512k of flash and 128k of SRAM. Now one of the 32 K SRAM banks, as you can see, can be configured with error correction coded, single error correction, double error detection on critical data. There's also optional data retention on this bank after power down. Then of course we have why you may be considering the 32655 in the first place, the BLE radio. This is the latest Bluetooth 5.2 spec and we'll talk about what this brings to us later on. So for now, we'll move on to the brains of our SOC. In this case, we have an ARM Cortex-M4 F clocked at 100 megahertz. And we also get a second processor core, a 32-bit RISC-V core clocked at 60 megahertz. If you've done any embedded development in the past, there's probably a little alarm going off in your head right now about the idea of integrating two very different cores into the same project. Oh, the places you'll go compiling code on separate tool chains for different memory architectures and then trying to get it all to play together nicely. Oof. What could possibly go wrong? To quote the great philosopher Dr. Seuss, you'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you'll say, I don't choose to go there. But luckily you don't have to worry about this scenario too much with the 32655. The second core is there to manage the Bluetooth radio gear. Although the hardware is not that complex in the grand scheme of things, the Bluetooth software stack has a lot to keep in order. From your host protocols at the top 
to your device and link management at the hardware level. On the upside, the BLE stack comes pre-written and doesn't require much in the way of processor resources. The downside is that timing is pretty critical. And if you're running a time critical application already on your processor, you may find yourself running into vexing timing issues. So this second core removes a lot of headaches around latency and interrupt handling. Well, the obvious question then becomes why use a RISC-V core for this particular job? After all, the Bluetooth libraries all compile very nicely for the ARM4. The answer is, it's all about power. A second ARM core is wasted on solely running the BLE stack. A much smaller, lower powered device can easily handle the job. OK, so you're still wondering why a RISC-V core? The answer is in the, gla in the granularity, that's a hard word to say, of how you can customise a RISC-V core. All commercial cores can be customised. That's part of why ARM cores are so popular in the first place. But the custom operations on ARM cores tend to be large grained and complete specialist functions. What RISC-V brings to the table is much finer grained extensions. So you could build your core with only integer multiply and divide extensions, for example as you don't need anything more than that to run a BLE stack. This means that only the features you know you're going to use need to be on the silicon. You're not burning power on running unused features. So your power consumption goes down. You can also clock the risk of five core slower at just the right rate to support BLE, further reducing your power. With all the ultra low power specifications being set out for modern applications, I think this low power way of doing things is probably going to be a good winner for Maxim. So what does Bluetooth 5.2 give to the world? Well, since Bluetooth 5 came along, it's pretty much been all about Bluetooth low energy or BLE as it's often known and reducing the amount of power devices used to connect to each other. The original spec for Bluetooth 5 gave us headline features like double data rate, a new physical layer that allows a raw transfer rate of up to 2 megabits per second. We also saw the option of quadrupling our original range, taking it up to 240 metres. That's uh, 800 feet for those of you that still use the old money. Now technically, of course, there's a choice to be made between two different radio sets to use these different features. Unfortunately, we don't get to use everything at once. Now, less of a headline, perhaps, was the advertising extensions. Now, these essentially increase the amount of data that could be broadcast without requiring devices to make a proper connection. Now, without doubt, the headline feature of the 5.1 spec was the introduction of direction finding services using either angle of arrival or angle of departure methods. Now we'll look a little bit more um, about what those are in a second, but the other big reveals in 5.1 were caching enhancements to the generic attribute profile. Now this essentially sped up connections and made them less power hungry by not requiring devices to perform a full service discovery every time the devices connect. Instead a hash is passed on to see if anything's changed in the profile and if it hasn't then cached data is used to make the connection. The other thing that happened in 5.1 was that advertising channel enhancements were added uh, and that essentially was there to reduce interference by allowing the advertising channels, which are 37, 38 and 39, to be used in any order. Now let's go back to those angle of arrival and angle of departure methods. So angle of arrival me uh, measurement takes an incoming signal from a remote device uh, and it takes that across multiple antenna. 
and there can be as many as 74 antenna in, in an array. And what we do is we analyze factors like phase difference between the antenna to determine where the signal originated. When we come to angle of departure, it's pretty much the same thing in reverse, where a device with a single antenna picks up a signal that has been sent across multiple antennas. Analyzing the difference between the incoming signals allows an estimate of where they, these signals have come from. So what's the point of all of this? Well, it gives us the ability to position items with an accuracy of a few centimeters. And this brings us right up to date with Bluetooth 5.2, as featured on the Max 32655. In many ways, this is Bluetooth returning to its audio roots, but with LE audio rather than classic Bluetooth. There's a new high quality, low power audio codec called Low Complexity Communications Coded, or LC3 for short. And this gives us better audio, even at lower data rates. The headline feature that supports much of what LE Audio has to offer us is something called isochronous channels. Now this is where the data streams of multiple channels are synchronized in their transmission. And what this gives us as users is finally independent synchronized audio streams to left and right headphones or earbuds. We can also have audio streams available to multiple listeners at the same time. Uh, and we can even have multi-language simultaneous audio streams. And sharing audio content for location-based services is something that can be done now in public venues, airports, or perhaps even in gyms, where multiple people might need the same information. We also have LE power control, and this allows receivers to keep the transmitted signal strength in the optimal range by requesting a train a, a train a change even in the transmit power level this means we have control over signal quality reduced data errors at the receiver and it also improves the coexistence of these devices with other 2.4 gigahertz denizens such as zigbee or wi-fi an optional item uh, in the 5.2 spec is enhanced attribute protocol which essentially allows multiple applications to interact with BLE in parallel potentially reducing some apps latency so there you go you have access to all this lovely Bluetooth 5.2 goodness with a max 32655 device so that wraps up our video on the Maxim 32655. If you've enjoyed it, please say something in the comments below. Thank you and see you soon.